To prepare your fabric for making your very own bias binding, start off by taking Best Press, give it a good spray and press. That way this will kind of give it a nice uh, heavy starched feel. And when you start cutting your bias strips and sewing them together and feeding them through the bias binder, they're gonna work great. Now notice how large a piece of fabric I'm starting with. The larger, the better. That's gonna make the fewer amount of seams it will take to make all your bias strips. People always ask me, how do I get that first cut to go on the bias from our large piece of fabric? And for me, the easiest way to do it is just look for the 45 degree line on the ruler. Place the ruler along the edge of the fabric and that's gonna give you your first cut all the way through. Once you've made your first cut, you're gonna realize that this fabric's gonna get longer and longer every time you do it. So sometimes what I do next is actually take the fabric and fold it down. So that edge you just cut, that's the edge we're gonna line up uh, with the ruler. But now it'll be a little easier to handle as you make your different cuts. Now this has been the easiest way that I have found to make accurate bias binding. I know there's a variety of other ways, but for me, Every time I make this cut, I know exactly the size that I am needing. So as I go ahead and make as many cuts as I need, yes, you can measure it out and see how many inches you've actually are creating. <laughs> when in doubt though, make as much bias binding as possible. It takes a little extra time, but boy, having it all done when you're uh, doing another project down the road and having one that matches perfectly is well worth that extra time. The Janome Bias Binder has an amazing amount of options here. Any place that you might want to finish an edge, you've got curves to go around, we can make our very own bias tape or you can purchase it in the store. The single fold uh, half inch size would be what will fit into this foot, but I usually like to make my own. So first off, we need to cut our strips. To sew the strips together, lay one strip right side up and one strip right side down add a T and then angle them into the sewing machine. I've shortened the stitch length and made it nice and tight so this seam is very accurate and it will be held very tight as it goes through the bias binders. What I usually do is set my needle to stop in the down position and as I go to put the next strip in, or sew the next strip, I'll just pull the end of the first one up, put it horizontal, put my next strip right side down, rotate it, Clockwise, put the needle right to the V of that little part there. And sew to the next corner. When I'm done, I do usually just take with my scissors to do the trimming here. I'm gonna separate, trim about to about an eighth of an inch. Now these little ears right here, we're gonna actually trim away. That way when we press these open, there's no extra fabric sticking out the sides, and then do that to each of your seams. This is great, because then you get exactly the fabric you wanna bind your projects with. Time to press the seams open. Give them a little shot of best press, and press them flat. Now what I try to do is leave this so it completely dries. Go to my next seam and work on it. Press that, little shot of best press again. One more little press. And that, by letting it dry, it's really gonna set that seam nicely and continue with the rest of your seams. The Janome Bias Binder is so easy to use. I don't know why we don't use it more often. You know, times where I sometimes reach for my serger, I could almost have a prettier bound edge when I was all said and done. So I'm gonna take my one inch strip, feed it down through the cone, and notice that I'm doing this without the foot on the machine. It's actually a little easier to manipulate as you're getting it to come out the the lower side here. Once that little tail comes through, you can give it a little tug and you'll see the fold is start being started to make. So once it's on there, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the foot to the machine. And I like to take a few stitches. First off to test my stitch length and my needle position. And see what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at how the fabric is coming right to the edge of the comb. Now this cone here has a mouth. Whatever you can fit in that mouth, now it's not very open, will be able to go through the bias binder. So something too thick, we're not talking batting, we're talking at one or two layers of fabric at the top, 
uh, and really getting that nice finished edge. So what I'm gonna do is show you how we're gonna go ahead and do this edge. I'm gonna just slide this in. If you need to, you can move the needle position to catch a little bit more or less of the fold, depending on your settings here. But once you're set up, you wanna hold the main fabric in your hand and keep it hugged into the mouth as much as possible. And then just kinda of keep the bias binding flowing smoothly. And as you do, it's just gonna do the work for you all the way through. Now, once I get it started, I don't take it out. So as it comes out the one side here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually trim it away. And then, oh my goodness, look how pretty that is. And on the back side, perfect. So I can trim that right on down. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do a curve next. So I'm gonna just take the same fabric, slide it down the cone, lift up the presser foot if you need to, but really once you get it started, it'll kind of take it in there for you. Get it started here. Again, now the curve, what you wanna do is keep as much of the fabric tucked into the little mouth as possible as it goes around the outside edge there. And really, I always feel like I need to hold it more than I probably do, but it kind of does the work for you. Just keep it hugged in there so it can take it in. When you go over a previously bound area, you might need to help it along if it is a little bit on the thick side, but otherwise just keep on going. What I'm gonna do is show you, now this is gonna be a, a, a raw, not a raw edge, a bias edge. So when you trim it, that actually isn't gonna unravel very much. You could add a little bit of fray check there and just call it good. And isn't that pretty how it goes around that curve? You could do some stitches, decorative stitches. You could actually do or insert a little bit of ribbon or lace if you wanna add a little accent. So the bias binder should be something that is in everybody's foot collection because you never know how easy it is to put a finished edge along a project. Now, if you're purchasing single fold bias tape in the packages, all you need to do is do the same exact thing, insert into the cone, it will center itself, set up for your stitch length and needle position and insert your fabric just like we did before. Ready for a bonus pattern? We have a double bind binding for your next quilt using your brand new bias binders. Pick your favorite one. Now this one is using a one quarter inch finished size. The free pattern is on our website. Look in the description below the YouTube video for the link to this exact information. And this is done all on the sewing machine. You're gonna start by taking your two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch binding that you usually make, fold it in half, and then the fold you're gonna bind with the bias binder. It's gonna look something like this. So it's all kind of fun when you're doing it. Just a quick all the way through your bias binder. Then you're gonna take your quilt and you're gonna go to the back side. So flip it over. And just like you regularly put binding on, you're gonna go ahead and start do your corners, miter them just like you're used to. Everything's the same until you're done. Then go ahead and turn it to the right side. When you turn it to the right side, you're gonna reach for a edge stitch foot or a walking foot with a stitch in the ditch foot that allows you to move the needle over. As you move the needle over, you're adding the second row of stitching you see on the finished quilt here with the bias binding. It's really fun. Just miter the corners and away you go. Now that you know about the bias binders, go find them, use them, and save yourself a ton of time.